Hello and welcome to Algebra 2, Chapter 10.6, and today we're going to discuss graphing and classifying conics. So all four conic sections together and telling how we have which one. So first of all, a definition of a conic. Remember that it's a shape formed by the intersection of a plane and a double napped cone. So here I have a picture for you. We have our um, double napped cone. It's just two cones that, that meet at their point there. And so if we're going to cut it in half and look at a cross-sectional area, we have a circle if we cut straight across, an ellipse if we cut at an angle. We have a parabola if we can make it just through one and stay within that one. And then you get a hyperbola if your cut goes through both. So everything we've done thus far in chapter 10 has been centered at 0, 0 until now. These we're going to shift. So just like everything else we've shifted this year, their center is now going to be at HK. And thus, so we have X minus H in everything, Y minus K. So the equations are really all the same except they have these minus H's and minus K's and that tells us where the center is. So make sure you have all of those equations written down before we continue and let's look at some examples. We want to write the equation of a parabola whose vertex is at 3, 2 and whose focus is at 4, 2. It helps me to visualize these, and so what I would do is I would do a quick sketch of, okay, where's 3, 2? There is my vertex, and 4, 2, there's my focus. So vertex, focus, that means this has to open to the right. So if this opens to the right, this has to be a y squared. And so what you just wrote down was y minus k squared equals 4p x minus h. Your vertex is h k. p is the distance from the vertex to the focus, so that distance is 1. Alright, so we get y minus 2 squared equals 4 times x minus 3. That's our equation. Next, we want to graph the quantity x minus 1 squared plus the quantity y minus 4 squared equals 9. This is a circle. All right, so where is my circle centered? It's centered at 1, 4. So I'm going to start at 1, 4. There's my center. And I'm going to to plot out my radius going all four up, down, left, right. So my radius is going to be 3. So I'm just going to go 3 to the right, 3 up, 3 left, and 3 down. Make my oh so great circle. There's the graph of my circle. Okay, so what about the equation of an ellipse with foci at 4, 2 and 4, negative 6 and vertices at 4, 4 and 4, negative 8? Okay, again, I am very much a visual person, so I'm going to sketch this out. Alrighty, 4, 2, that's a focus, that's an F, 4, negative 6, right. and 4, 4, and 4, negative 8. Alright, so what I have determined is that this is a vertical ellipse, and so my vertical ellipse, my a squared is under my y, so let me jot down my equation here. Whoop, that's an a. Okay. 
All right, so I need to find the center of this line, and that is going to be my HK. All right, so really what you're doing is you are doing a midpoint with these two points. So we add the x's and divide by 2, add the y's and divide by 2, and it looks like our center, center, is at 4, obviously, negative 2. So my equation is going to have to be an x minus 4 squared plus a y plus 2 squared. All right, so we got that much. So my center, 4, negative 2, all right. So to get my a value, all I have to do is count one of these. So to go to negative 2 to 4, that'd be 6. Or to go from negative 2 to negative 8, that'd be 6. So a has to be 6. So a squared, 36. But then the other thing it's going to give me is my c value, right? All right, so this is c. So we go from negative 2 to positive 2, that's going to be 4. So c is 4. 4 an ellipse. Yes, it's c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So if I want b squared, b squared is a squared minus c squared. So we're looking at 36 minus 16, 20. And then that is b squared. We don't need a square root it or anything. That is the equation of that ellipse. So really having to just dissect what they give you and figure out what you need. All right, so having discussed a few of these, why don't you go ahead, pause the video, see if you can graph this, figure out what this is, see if you can graph it, and when you press play, I will discuss the answer. I'll give you a few seconds here to pause it. All right, I know yours look way better than mine do, but this is what we got here. Um, first of all, noticing that the Y comes first, so my center is actually negative 3, 2, plotted that. Then we get A and B, plotted that, drew in my rectangle and my diagonals, and then drew in my hyperbola. So hopefully yours looks the same way. All right, let's move on to something else. So if our equation is not in the standard form for that type of conic, how do I tell what it is? So here we go. If the graph is in the form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus e e y plus f equals zero, what kind of conic section is it? Well, we're going to use its discriminant. So this is called a second degree equation, just because we have some degree twos there, a general second degree equation for a conic section, x and y. And so your discriminant is actually the same discriminant you used in the quadratic equation. Oh, you just love when those kinds of things happen. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Look at that. All over 2a. So discriminant, still b squared minus 4ac. No, we're not doing anything with the quadratic formula here. Um, so really the issue is, well, what's b, what's a, what's c? So you need to have this equation written down, because we need all these, but b in particular is what's with the xy, a is what's with the x squared, and c is what's with the y squared. And so if we have those things, then we can find our discriminant. And notice the little disclosure here at the bottom. If b equals 0, then each, then each axis of the conic is horizontal or vertical. That's why everything we've done so far has had a horizontal or vertical axis. Um, if b is not equal 0, then it's neither horizontal or vertical, and thus you can get into ellipses that are on their side, or hyperbolas that are on their sides, right? So we've seen those before. So let's see if we can take an equation and determine what we have. Okay, so classifying 2x squared plus y squared plus 8y plus 6 equals 0. Okay, so we said b, it was, let me just write ax squared plus bxy plus c. So see if you can be telling what these letters are. 
Nope, E-Y. Hmm. Well, E-F-2, that's the alphabet. E-Y. Alrighty. So, we have A. We have C. We have E. And we have an F. So the discriminant is just B squared minus AC. So we're talking about 0 squared minus, so that minus is important, um, 2 squared. Nope, no, no squared. Don't ask where I got the squared from. How about just 2 times 1? All right, negative 2. So looking back over the list you just wrote, is less than 0? Yes. Less than zero, the first two you wrote were less than zero. And it says less than zero for a circle or ellipse. So is this a circle or ellipse? Well, if we continue reading, does B equals zero and A equals C? Nope, so it's not a circle. Either B does not equal zero. Well, our B equals zero, so that doesn't work. Or A does not equal C. Ding, ding, ding. A does not equal C. We have an ellipse. All right, so how do we turn this equation into an equation that we can graph? All right, so what we're actually going to do is complete the square. Okay, remember completing the square for quadratics? We're going to complete the square for an ellipse. So the first thing is we got to make sure we kind of group our x's. So that's my only x. There's my y's. And let's go ahead and move what we previously called c to the other side. Let's move our constant to the other side. We're not going to do much with the 2x squared at the moment. Not much to do with 2x squared. But we are going to complete the square for the y's. And so we're going to kind of group it together here. And so remember, completing the square is you take half of the middle number, square that, and add it to both sides. So half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16, and thus we're going to add 16 to both sides. And then we can rewrite this, 2x squared plus, this factors now into y plus 4 squared equals 10. But we don't want it to equal 10, we want it to equal 1. So we're going to divide everything by 10. And what we get is x squared over 5 plus y plus 4 squared over 10 equals 1. So there we go. We now have this in a form that we're used to graphing from. So to graph it, we're going to look at our center first. So because there's not another number with the x, so our center is going to be 0. That's with the x, negative 4. So we're going to start at 0, negative 4. And our bigger number is under our y, so this is going to be a vertical ellipse. And that bigger number is our a squared. So we're going to take the square root of it. So that is a squared. So a is the square root of 10, which is 3.16. So we're going to go 3.16 up and down. So just above there. Okay. And then our b squared is 5. And so b is the square root of 5, which is 2.24. So we're going to go left and right 2.24. There we go. Draw in your ellipse. All right. There's that one. Let's look at another one. Okay, so the first thing is figuring out what this is by using the discriminant. So we have an A and a C. And again, B is that XY, so B is 0. So B squared minus... minus 4ac, which just reminds me, I left out the 4 on the last one, didn't I? It still would have been <laughs> an ellipse. 
uh, we would have taken our negative 2 times 4 and had negative 8 as our discriminant. Whew, hopefully you caught that. Okay, that's what happens when you do math on Saturday, right? So b squared 0 minus 4 times 4 times negative 1. So that's going to give us a positive 16. And looking over the list we wrote, that is greater than 0. So this is going to be a hyperbola. Okay, so putting it into the right equation. So the first thing you want to do is you want to write the x's next to each other. And we're going to write the y's next to each other. And we're going to go ahead and move the constant over to the other side. By the way, if you want a refresher on completing the square, we did that in 5-5. Five five, and you are welcome to go back and watch that lesson if you think you need to, a little refresher on completing the square. So one thing with completing the square is we never complete the square with a leading coefficient. And so we're looking at the x's and the y's separately. We're going to, have, we're going to complete the square for both. We want to factor out that 4 just from the x's. I'm going to leave a space there. And we're going to factor out a negative 1 for the y's. And we're going to leave a space there. Okay. And so to complete the square for the x's, we're going to take half of 4, which is 2, square it, which is 4, plus 4. The deal, though, is if you distributed this 4 on the outside, you would actually have a plus 16 now on the left-hand side, so we need to add 16 to the right-hand side, not 4. Because of the 4 on the outside, you'd actually have a plus 16. Okay? For the y's, same thing, half of 2 is, half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4, so it's a plus 4 here. But really, I would have a minus 4 if I distributed that negative 1. So if I have a minus 4 on that side, I have to have a minus 4 on the other side. So we could rewrite this 4 times. We're going to factor this into x minus 2 squared minus 1. So factoring this one into y plus 2 squared equals, and so uh, simplifying the right-hand side, we just get 16. Remembering that it has to equal 1, we're going to divide everything by 16. Alright, so let's simplify those fractions there. We're going to end up with x minus 2 squared over 4 minus y plus 2 squared over 16 equals 1. So there we go, we're in the correct form now. So if we graph it, our center is going to be at positive 2, negative 2. And so A always comes first, so A is going to be 2, and this is going to open left or right because the x squared is first. So we're going to go left, right, 2. We're going to go up, down, 4. Okay, we're going to draw in our rectangle. You really should draw it dashed. It's just a little hard for me to draw it dashed. And some diagonals here. And really, I hope you're using your straight edge for these. So there's your diagonals. And then come back in and draw in your branches. All right, that's what I have for 10-6 for today. Let me know if you have any questions. If not, I will see you in class next time. Have a great day.